Yeah, the program is still for the record. That was a nice one with the email idea right there. Trust me. And I'm going to have another nice one with my next guest, Mr. Don Omokwe. How you doing, Don? Boss. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's, it's been, been a while. Good, minutes. good to have you here. And what we're, going, we're just going to do industry gossip. Fantastic. That's what we're going to do today. Um, Don Omokwe is a filmmaker and he's been responsible for some of the best titles that's come out on the Nollywood um, landscape in very, very recent times. Taxi Driver. Yes. Um, the current one is Market Moss. Sell, Michael Ma Michael Ma Michael and of course, um, what the biggest one is wedding party. Wedding, wedding party, exactly. Yes, you've had your finger in pretty much all these things. <laughs> no, literally. And and let me just break it down. Up up till about four years ago, you were one of us here. Yes. You decided <laughs> to go to Nigeria. Yes. And in a very short period of time, you've been able to you Do. know be part of and a big so industry. Big. So, what? Why did it happen so quickly for you? I mean, it, it's. I mean, so. Like most things in in Nolo, when, when people saw me in 2015, they thought um, I was born in 2015. In Nigeria. More in Nigeria. Most people don't know that we actually had careers and lives, and we've been doing this for like 15 odd years. Mm -hmm. BBC, Al Jazeera, what's a view? Mm -hmm. I think um, I think the credit goes to Kenne Okay. because I've always worked in television. Okay. And and I used to publish a magazine in African cinema, and I used to write yeah. about African that's cinema. How and well, yes, that's how we met. Mm -hmm. Published a magazine, and Oparo was so convinced and this that is yes, Ken Oparo for my MD of film house cinemas, yeah. he was so convinced that I was the guy to set up the film division of the business. Okay. And you know, and I hadn't really made films, but all I had done was televisions and what have you. But I wrote extensively about film. And Oparo was like, "Don, I've read your stuff. I know you know this stuff. Let's come and do it." And that's how it all started. You know. Arrived in Nigeria in 2015. We had well, to make you films. Have a soft it was, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like there was there was no soft landing because I had to set up a company, literally. Yeah. Um, set up the departments, recruit people, and at the same time we had to make films. So so all in one go. All in one go. So usually you will be given time to like you know Definitely. get your team together and no. So first year we made three films, and to make three films in your first year in Nigeria. Like that, like that was some of the most stressful experience I ever had. But, but the credit I keep on giving to Kenny Okparo was that Kenny Okparo left me to work. Okay. He left me alone. If anybody had tried to micromanage me, yeah, I'd be back, no, back, 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 back down here. <laughs> because the stress was just too much. I could remember throughout 2015, I was living in a, in, in a, in a four-bedroom flat, and I literally had only one furniture in that flat, which was my bed. Because you were in and out. Which was my bed, literally, because I was never there. I was never there, and we're working, and we're working. You know, that's when we did um, the the Aousa film, Chasing an Eiffel, yes, yes. and then we did Lunchtime Mirrors, yes. and the most popular one, which is not Taxi Driver or It's, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, when you empower people to work, things really, things really, really move fast, and I think well, that has been the success. That's that is that usually the trend in Nigeria? No, never be given that kind no, of like, no. So I mean, the diaspora and Kenya. What did it work for you? Yes, yes. I think the diaspora and Kenya really worked for me okay. because I like, 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 like most of the. I always say, um, employers in Nigeria they have itchy fingers. Mm. They always want to touch and put their fingers and everything. So you bring a brilliant guy in to come and work for you, and then you want to tell him how to think and how to do things, and which is which is typical what happens down there. So you ended up you, you ended up creating more problems in a stressful environment for a stressed person. But I think just coming in and just coming in and actually working because we knew we wanted to make films, mm. and none of us knew what was going to work in Nigeria. We knew that. You know, that's so almost, almost you know, like the beginning of this it, yeah, new it, generation. Yeah, it was of the film. beginning of this new generation because, in, if, you know, not not the same thing controversial, but if if you know, if 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 the highest grossing film in the first and second quarter in 2015 was Dazzling Mirage yes. by um, Ongu TK, Ongu TK yeah. then, that's, then, then that's a massive indictment for the industry in the sense that Ongu TK has stayed away from anything commercial. His films speak to art. Mm -hmm. And so, so it being art, it's not supposed to be commercial, but for it to, to, to be what's leading the box of it, you could realize that there was merits. something... No, had no had it had a big... Yeah, it, had yes. it had its merit. It yes. wasn't comedy. Yeah. It wasn't any of those things. It had its merit. But, but then what figures were we looking at? We're looking at about um, 13 million in the cinemas. 
and, and, and you know, 13 million sounds a lot, but... But there were fewer screens but, at the time as yes, well. Yes, yes, there were fewer screens, but if you look at 13 million, only a third of that comes to you as a producer. So if you actually look at that, third. a third. So if you, if you from, the, from the box office. So if you look at the cinema business, it's a very, very... What's the regular so, split? So, the, so okay, so... Between um, cinema and, and producer. Um, okay, so everything is done weekly, weekly, weekly. But yeah. because if we just... Round it up. Round it up. Um, about 40% goes to the cinema. Yeah. That is the exhibition, the exhibition it's space it's across yeah, Nigeria. 40%. 20% goes to government in taxes. different forms of taxes. 10% yes. um, goes to your distributor. So what's left to you as a producer about, is about 30%. 30%. Yeah. So um, 30 and who pays for marketing? Who pays for now? You, you as a producer pays so for marketing. So it comes out of that 30%. Yes. So it's a very stressful so experience how being a producer. Is the film business it's not as lucrative. <laughs> it's not as lucrative. However, it yes. appears the women are leading the pack. Yes. Now the women are leading the pack, and the reason the women are leading the pack is all these women they have what we call structures. Moa Budu, Bolanle Austin Peters, um, even Ken Tiba. They Papa have. Oshii, they have they, they, you know, they, they have structures in which they've. They have structures in which they've Existing put. Existing structures. It's just, yeah, in terms of Mo, in terms of Bolanle Austin Peters, Mo has in, in, in life. In she has Terra Culture. Ken yeah. Tiba already has a massive yes. following yes. of fan base that have come with so her. That yes. Some of that so those things allows them to be able to pull their marketing in a very big way. Um, but but also you have um, you have Jade that had done fantastically On well TV. in Indani yeah. in Indani and then from there she was bringing that fan base into cinemas mm -hmm. and she made a very good film she made a very very okay. good film we cannot take that away from us we so did the UK yeah exactly mm -hmm. so so you know that did quite very well um, you know film filmmaking has always been something that has always lent itself to 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 the talents of women in terms of being able to do many things at the same time. And they're time. telling good stories. And too. they're telling good stories too. So, but, 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 you know, but they also have a lot of guys out there that are doing well, just like myself too. So let's just don't, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, just yeah, don't yeah, give yeah. it all to the so ladies. Because, yes. because before then, before then, mm. um, if I was to pick some female producers off the top of my yeah. head, I'd probably think of MME Song. Yes. And really, that's almost yes. at that level. Yes. So in these recent times now, now, and the general themes revolve around parties, mm. um, the, the everyday Niger yeah. lifestyle, you know, hence wedding parties, telling yes. that story. Um, it's okay, told that yes. story to a degree. Uh, uh, bling, negotiations, the yes. new one coming out is also kind of like, so is, mm. is that what really is really tripping Nigerians or producers are just playing safe and, and going for stories? No, so, no, so if we look at it and, and if we break it down, um, Wedding Party came about because films were not making enough money in cinemas. Okay. And, and in 2015, Mo did 50, I did Taxi Driver, um, In Block did, um, uh, um, um, did Jeffrey, did I can't actually remember that in the name. I don't know. AY had done the, the year previous, 2014. Okay. That's the success of 30 Days in Atlanta. Exactly. And everybody was not like, ah, if, if AY can make so much it's millions, really yes, filmmaker. make so much millions, why can't we? So we all banded together, four companies, um, um, In Block did Out of Luck. Yes. And then um, Koga Studios, Chris died sadly, yeah, yeah. Um, did, uh, um, did The Visit. So and these were four okay. very strong films in that 2015. So we all came together with Mo to say we need to do a blockbuster film. Okay. And we now started thinking, and Mo was like, it had to be a wedding. And okay. so, so the idea behind Wedding Party was more about how do we increase the elasticity of demand, the elasticity, elasticity of demand in the cinemas. Because even with Wedding Party being the highest grossing film in the history of Nigeria, about 500 um, million have a, have, naira, have a billion. Have a billion naira. If, you look, if you look at that within the figures, that's about, what, 300,000 people going to watch the film in a population of 200 million. So we're still behind. We're still far behind. We are still really, really far behind. So, it's, so it's, it, it's about the figures. Because if, if, if I spend 100 million in the cinemas and 30% and comes to me, that means for me to make my 100 million back, you need to be that I, mean, I, I need to make 300 million. million. Oh, yeah, yes, I need million. to make 300 million in the cinemas for me to make my. So, in the cinema business, it's not as, it's not as rosy as, every, as everybody thinks it is. But as distribution is, is, is increasing, yeah, yeah. then it becomes better. How, then it becomes better. How viable currently is the distribution landscape? The, the distribution... From cinema, okay. let's work it down now. Yes. So... Not all films make cinema. No, not all films make cinema. But, but, but cinema tends to help you 
um, help you negotiate well okay. once you um, once you come out. For the so other levels. For, for the other levels. So you, so you go to cinemas. If you do quite very well, you have your runs. From there, you then start to chase up um, SVOD. Yeah, see good. whether it's Netflix, yeah. Amazon, or one of those guys who yeah. can give you the best deal. And then based on that, you then start to leverage maybe television, yeah. aeroplanes, what have you. Yeah. And then you start to and then you start to pull it. The difficult thing about filmmaking is. Um, you, it takes a while before your money comes. So if you if make a comes. film, you know, if it comes or when it comes. Okay, when it if comes. you make a good product, it will come. Oh, yeah. But if, so if, for instance, like if Netflix is to pay you a million dollars for your film, Netflix will pay you in Have four. Have that much or no. any, any producer currently? No, 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 and a man of the record, I always say when Netflix um, spends anything above a million dollars on anything, they, and there's a press release that follows it. Okay. So I haven't seen any press release to, a, to any of the films people are talking about. And we're so not going to mention any names. Oh, I'm not, not mentioning any names. Us. Exactly. So, exactly. So I'm just like, I'm just like, listen, onto, uh, onto Netflix, because for tax purposes, yes. um, and, for, uh, and, and, and for the board and what to be Netflix, you always declare once they spend anything above a million. Okay. You always do that, and you have all those films out there. So that's why it's. Um, but then again, I don't know why people don't want to be transparent with information in Nigeria. They Let's feel put like. Let's there. We're gonna come back with transparency <laughs> okay. in a minute. We're going on a break right okay. now. I'm gonna and we're still continuing this conversation mm -hmm. with Donna Makoya on the intricacies of the film business, particularly in Nollywood, Nigeria. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. We're back, and I'm still with Don Mamakwe, filmmaker, industry, film industry juggernaut, <laughs> giving me all the juicy bits we really get to hear from Nigeria. So we're talking about distribution yeah. um, and the different layers we have in, in, in Nollywood. Now, um, we don't have enough cinemas. Yes. But what is clear, if we can have hit the half a billion with a good title yes. from what we currently have, how far can we stretch the cinemas in the next one year? I mean, it's How quite. Is it? I mean, I mean, it's it's. I mean, we're getting more and more investors. Mm -hmm. I mean, filmers filmers are doing quite very, very very well. I think they probably have about twelve cinemas, and right now another three we opened this year that will make like fifteen. Okay. Um, so I think the yes, making. Uh, um, I'm not sure if they're actually the biggest because I know Genesis is moving aggressively as well. Okay. You know, these things changes because a lot of people don't announce. Um, that they're having a new cinema opening. Suddenly, they don't see coming. Yeah, because Nobody everybody's, pl everybody's playing their own yeah. tactics and tactics and words of view. But um, but we have a lot of um, single cinema owners okay. who are just coming to set up their own cinemas. And they, are they part yes. of the distribution chain as well? And they're now, and they're now part of the distribution ch chain. So we have lots of funny name cinemas popping up everywhere, just which, like which is great, well, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is great. So I think right now we probably have about 50 cinemas, maybe 50, maybe 50, yes, I think we have about 50 cinemas by That's the end of this year. We, um, we're still, we're still we're a bit away. No, I mean, because look at France, for instance. France, uh, look at Paris yes. alone. The city of Paris has 600 cinemas. Which is still little compared to like London. Which is just Paris. Yes, the exactly. city of Paris alone yes, has 600 cinemas. So you know what I mean? Your money's gonna on uh, opening weekend. Your money Lagos, Lagos, and Paris probably have like five million people. Lagos has about 22, 23 million yeah. people, and uh, and Lagos doesn't have up to twelve cinemas. So there's there's a lot of scope. There's, room, yeah. there's a lot of scope. But then again, Black Panther made over over a hundred thousand, over um, eight hundred um, eight hundred thousand, uh, eight hundred million yes. in the cinemas, and that pushes you to in about Nigeria. in Nigeria. So that pushes you to about five hundred million people. No, 500,000 people, rather. Yes, exactly. 500,000 people. Heads. So, you know, yes, heads. But, but imagine if one million Nigerian goes to see one film. That film would have grossed a billion. Nah. A billion in there. How soon do you see that happening? Um, oh, maybe in the next two years, possibly. But do you, you, do you think that is attainable with the amount of cinemas we currently have? Um, I mean, yes, it yes, it is at it, it is it, it is attainable because um, it's for me, it's not even so much the cinemas. For me, it's it's creating the cinema culture, because even with the cinema numbers we have, mm -hmm. three hundred thousand people out of a population of two hundred million people is severely poor. Yeah. 
So, so we have to do we have to do things that bring people out, and that's why and that's our wedding party came about an event cinema, event something party. noisy, something, something that was going to yeah. get people out, and people came, and people it watched it, and it worked, crazy, and man. it worked, and I think if we can repeat that, Black Panther was essentially it's the same thing like the wedding party, it made noise, everybody wanted to watch it, it was an event, um, and you know, and suddenly that culture is going, but we need more of that. And, and you know, and and you know, and we need to bring, and you know, maybe not comedy anymore. And that's why um, everybody's happy what Kemi did with King her film, Boys. King of Boys. It wasn't comedy, was, and it brought and it brought awesome. a lot of people out. Imagine if Kemi had more money. If Kemi had more money and more time to make that film, um, that film probably would have done even more than Wedding Party, which is also what the industry needs. So it's about cinema ed education. It's about getting more and more people. For me, it's not about having cinemas everywhere in Nigeria because it's, it, you must have cinemas where the purchasing power is. Mm -hmm. But you get more people out Are to they? come and watch the cinema. If you look at the UK, talk about the UK right now. Mm. UK Nollywood has been um, on the up, yeah. perhaps not at the speed mm. expected, However, um, in the current currently in Nigeria, there's a, 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 a film produced by a UK producer, Yemisi Banjoko, okay. called The Alter Date. Alter Date. And it was in the top 20 in the cinemas all through its run. Fantastic. And that's very exciting for a lot of um, yeah. UK producers watching this right now. Though the talent, most of the talent were sourced in Nigeria, and I think they only had limited filming over here. But what can UK Nollywood do differently? or to add to what they have, the asthma they have, to make an impact in Nigeria? I think, I, I, I think what new, um, UK Nollywood need to do to really do well in Nigeria is to find stories that resonate with Nigerians. You cannot tell a localized story better than the local guys. It's just not going to work. But, but they are... Can they a UK are, story but sell? A UK story will tell. It has Properly to sell. Told. Properly told. I mean, I, I mean, imagine you're doing a story on just on immigration, the avalanche of Nigerians and the experience from Canada to different the UK twists. to what a different twist. The things people go through, that life, that experience. You know, so they, I, I think you have to find your own authenticity. Mm. Um, you, you, you cannot recreate Nigeria for anybody. You know, the, the, the texture, the smell, the, the color, the sound, the feel, yeah. everything locally, you can't. But, um, but if you tell a story that can travel, if you tell a story that can engage, you have the right stats in it, it would work. It, it, it certainly works. For, for me, I feel like the UK guys have a better chance of connecting um, Nollywood to the world. Than we like local guys, yes, yes because they can see both yeah, yeah. both cultures. And far too often, um, um, the guys doing Nollywood in the local market have this romanticized sense of what the West is and what the West want to Indeed, see. Yes. But those that stay down here understand the nuances. So it's it, it, it's about finding that balance. On um, perhaps partnerships. Because it's it's one of those things that we don't do, you know. Why can't you know? Why you can't people are scared? You know, but you know, don't trust who can you trust? Say, who can you trust? I always say, why can't a why can't me produce a Kunle Afolayo? Why can't I produce a Kemi Adetiba? Well, I did that on on wedding party. Mm -hmm. But I think the the moment the big guys start to work together. Okay. I think that is when Do you think the that is when is things. Will, yes, it has to be. The, filmmaking is a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. You cannot do it all on your own. And I think if 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 we lay those emphasis on those things, we can make more money. Imagine us getting one million people out of a population of uh, 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 of two hundred so million. We need so let's so so for for reference now, we just yes. need to be thinking. We need to make that one million sit up film. We have to make the one million sit up film. I don't know what yes. we're going to do it. <laughs> It has to be maybe a sci-fi, maybe, or maybe we might have to go Nigerian back to that, or maybe we might have to go back to those Yami Ushuga. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You know, because those films sell. Still talking distribution, Netflix. Yes. Netflix seems to now be the um, the current buzzword yeah. for a lot of producers. You know, last night I saw a film for the first time called Joy. Joy. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. No, I haven't seen it. It's on Netflix, and it was a film detailing the story of a particular lady, a Nigerian sex worker living in Austria. Oh, wow. Uh, it was such a fantastic film. And Is that based on the book? No. Okay. No. Um, the director and producer 
It was best film at the London Film Festival last year. Wow. Joy. Best film at the London Film Festival. Director is Turkish, but she lives in Austria. Cast, 100% Nigerian, and never seen any one of them before. Wow. Ever. And if you ever wanted to have an insight into the life of a commercial sex worker, a Nigerian or mm. African commercial sex worker in Italy or Germany, or, or that's the film to watch, you know? And that's a non-Nigerian yeah. who told a fantastic story. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, I mean, troubled, troubled, because um, any of us should have told that story. But she did a um, good job. But she did an amazing job. And um, I, th you know, I think is I, th I think we we are growing. And will continue to grow. I mean, and, I mean, Steven Spielberg and these guys are in their seventies, and you know, we're they're still young, stuff, yeah, yeah. and they're still making stuff. But I think that is where we need to go. And if you look at if you look at the the big players in the industry um, now, a lot of us are not making ten films a year. Some of them are not making films. We've gone away from that. You know, um, let's focus more on the art. Uh, I'm certainly going to see joy. I think that is a story that um, that should be told locally. I mean, it should be told locally, and uh, and it goes back to the same thing we said about the UK Nollywood. Yes. Those are the stories that somebody from the UK Nollywood space, you know, or can even resonate some, with can resonate with and can even tell. And I think it is, uh, you know, the industry is trying, and we are pushing, and um, and I am I, I I am excited because you know you have films like God Calling. You had films like, you know, yes. uh, 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 um, Kemi's film. You know, it, it's people are trying, but, but certainly we have to do much more. So much more to do. Okay. Um, and on a final note, are you back to the UK now for good or you're just in? <laughs> <laughs> you're just going to be no, coming in and no, out? No, no. Um, so part of the reason why I'm actually here is to come and reestablish my base in London as well. Okay. Because um, I, I, I just pack things and run to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But I think now I will stay there for, for, for yes for four years. And I think now I'm in that space where I want to um, work both in Nigeria and in the UK. Try and tell films, the festival films which will go through the festival route and also tell the Nigerian films which will just go straight to the cinema. So that's probably the reason why I'm back in the UK down here because I'm British at the end of the day. So I can as well British I'm British Nigeria. <laughs> so I am <laughs> British yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I am British, British Nigeria. Nigeria. No, in fact I'm Nigerian British. British. <laughs> so when you are here, yes. you are British Nigerian. Yes, when you are, are there, you are Nigerian, Nigerian British. British. So, so it, it's it's uh, you see, the, 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 you can't walk away from the established structures yes. that exist in the UK, whereby if you have the talent and you have a good product, the whole industry comes behind that product. Indeed, yeah. Unlike in Nigeria, where um, once you raise your money and you make your film, you don't really have the support network. You know, you have to do your marketing. You have to carry it on your head. You have one to run man, It's, you know, you know, you, you we, 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 people won't live long, you know. <laughs> at that pace. Just, at that pace, you can't, you can't. I mean, I, I make a film and I end up in the hospital. And it's been like that all through since 2015. So it, it's so, so much you want to come out and take your break. So yes, I am, I, I am, I am very much interested to, to, to to, to come and reset in the UK as working Nigerians. Well, we've missed you, mm. and you've come back at a good time. And I, there are quite a few films lined up because the whole premiere and um, mm. release thing has been doing well in the period being gone. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard about the money wedding party two made in the UK. Very well, very thanks to you actually. No, no, thanks to thanks to our, our UK massive. <laughs> our UK you know, massive. Workers. Shout out to them, you yeah. know. And there are quite a few coming. Um, Don. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Good to I see am you back. again. I am You're back. back. Yes. <laughs> the program is still for the record. And when we come back, we're going to be meeting financial advisor Rashid Bushuru, who's going to be telling us a few things that we need to be doing in our financial lives to make a difference. Stay tuned.